Hello and welcome to your Wayne County Connection. My name is Misty Hollis and I am your host for tonight. Wayne County Connection is a program that is brought to you by WCTV, Wayne County Government, and Wayne County Vision. This is a program that keeps you informed of activities and programs occurring in your county. Today we have a guest with us, his name is Jeff Hudson and he is with Relational Gravity and we're happy to have you here. Delighted to be here. Good, I'm excited about this. Um, Jeff, you are going to talk to us tonight about, and there's going to be some, um, I think, PowerPoint presentations going on on the screen as we talk, also about the Nettle Creek Legacy Project. And I know this has been in the paper some, but I also know a lot of people out in the surrounding county areas outside of uh, the Nettle Creek area aren't quite familiar with it. So we wanted to give Hagerstown and the Nettle Creek area the opportunity to showcase what has been going on for the past, I don't know, seven, eight months, something like that. So mm -hmm. what is the, the Nettle Creek Legacy Project? Well, the Legacy Project is a, an outreach uh, that was initiated by the Hagerstown Plan Commission and the Hagerstown Council to do some strategic planning. There were a lot of um, issues that the town has faced because of growth, because of change. And there have been new plants located in, in economic development taking place in the Hagerstown area. And there were a lot of questions the town officials had saying, where do we go from here? And the Nettle Creek Legacy Project is that answer. And basically what we're doing there is we're doing strategic planning, but we're trying to marry strategic planning concepts and visioning concepts so that we can uh, get good community input into mm -hmm. the process as well. And then give the, uh, the town fathers and mothers a chance to look at the document and have a, a guiding direction for the town as they make decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, was this just confined to Hagerstown? No, and that was one of the things that uh, we talked about early on, and that is to recognize that, that really life in our area of the county is really more of a Nettle Creek area, mm -hmm. and that uh, in terms of economic development, it can't end at the, the city limits of, of Hagerstown. And so we focused more on the shape of the Nettle Creek School District, which also takes in portions of Henry County. And uh, we looked at that and tried to get people involved in all aspects uh, from all areas of the school district, uh, but at the same time recognizing that the large majority of the people involved are probably tending more to be Hagerstown people than, uh, than the entire Nettle Creek area, though we did draw from all of it. Mm -hmm. Now, um, who ultimately was responsible for requesting your services and bringing you into the fold of this idea? Well, it was kind of an ongoing discussion uh, that really, if you, if, if you really want to look at it, it has its roots clear back when we did a project called Hagerstown 2000 back in 1989 and 90. Mm -hmm. And then we did some visioning and we did some, uh, some thinking about what should the town's future be uh, at that point in the, in the year 2000, which seems so far away and seems like such a big milestone. Uh, and what we found is we've all survived um, the year 2000 <laughs> and we looked back and we saw that there were a lot of good ideas out of the Hagerstown 2000 project. Some of them got done, some of them didn't as, as happens with projects. But the town officials began to remember that and say, do you remember when we did this and a lot of people got involved, there was a lot of excitement and uh, we did some planning and maybe we should do something similar to that. Uh, on the theory that great minds think alike, this is about January of last year when I started my own business, I began to think that uh, in terms of strategic planning that maybe this is something uh, that, that would be good for Hagerstown. I'd served on the Hagerstown 2000 steering committee and I was thinking, I wonder if town officials are thinking about revisiting this issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I began to ask questions in town and found out that yes, in fact, Hagerstown people, Hagerstown uh, planning commission members and others were thinking about the need for some sort of planning. And uh, in the end of March and, and April, May, there was a lot of discussion about that, what form would it take, what is needed, and then ultimately uh, into, into June and July, they decided to uh, go with the process I recommended, and we took four months and did it. That's amazing. Well, let's talk about you a little bit, because okay. you said you started your own business. So what, um, what exactly is relational gravity? I don't want to make this too much of a commercial, obviously. But I want, I want people to understand what expertise you bring to the table regarding strategic planning and visioning. Well, we do in relational gravity. We do strategic planning, we do marketing, we do public relations. And the strategic planning, the type of strategic planning I had done before the Legacy Project had been mostly focused in the corporate area. And many times corporations were looking to achieve marketing objectives or even public relations objectives, but didn't have a solid strategic plan to back up that direction. 
So over the years, I got involved in a lot of corporate strategic planning and uh, still do that as, as, as an important part of my business. Mm -hmm. But I thought, you know, let's take some of the things that I learned from the corporate strategic planning and marry them to what I learned through Hagerstown 2000 and uh, see if we can't come up with something that was a marriage of, of, of visioning and, and something similar to a corporate strategic plan at the same time. Now you're a Hagerstown homeboy? I'm a Hagerstown homeboy. Actually, <laughs> I, I'm a relative newcomer to Hagerstown. My family moved there in 1973. So uh, it's, it's, I was 11 years old and uh, we had lived in Relatively Richmond. And, and, exactly. <laughs> and, and we moved to Hagerstown and I loved it as a kid and uh, enjoyed growing up there, participated in 4-H and swam on the high school swim team and did a lot of those things, mm -hmm. And uh, but never expected that I would be back in Hagerstown. Uh, we had continued to live in Hagerstown, but like a lot of Hagerstown people, uh, I was commuting to work in Indianapolis, areas there, and then in Anderson. And uh, then last year started my own business and thought, this is a good chance to reconnect with my community. Well, that is great. That's wonderful. I mean, we hear a lot of people choosing not to stay in Wayne County or moving away and so it's nice to have a success that you chose to stay here and also bringing your gifts back to the area as well. Well you know we found in our study that we have a, a kind of a disproportionate number of people in Hagerstown who have started their own businesses and made the decision to stay there to raise their families and mm -hmm. live uh, rather than doing what many people in our community have done and that is go to the southwest or the south to find uh, career opportunities and mm -hmm. uh, what we found is a number of people have been successful making their own opportunities in the community. That's great. So when did the Legacy Project begin? When did it kick off? You know, we officially kicked off during Jubilee Days. And uh, Hagerstown Jubilee Days is, is basically the homecoming of, of, of Hagerstown. And uh, at that time, we basically walked the sidewalks and talked with as many people as we could about the project, mm -hmm. what we were trying to accomplish, passed out a few thousand brochures, and. Uh, began to try and make people aware of what the uh, process was and aware of the legacy project and get them to enlist themselves to get involved. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's where we began. And uh, at the same time that was going on, uh, behind the scenes there was a lot of research going on. Uh, I spent a lot of time going and getting census data or getting economic development data or getting health data and then saying what can we know about in particular Hagerstown and the Nettle Creek area. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so we did a lot of research and research and, and recruiting the community was probably one of our first steps. Now, so what were some of the uniques to, knowing that you grew up in Hagerstown and then when you see it on paper, I, I experienced that myself with Wayne County, what were some surprising um, stats that you saw and that you noticed that maybe would be off the top of your head you'd like to share? Well, you know, we, we make some assumptions when we live in a community of what our town is like. And growing up in Hagerstown, I thought of Hagerstown as a rural community, which it is, and I thought of it as very strongly a farming community. And the statistics would indicate that agriculture is important in Hagerstown. But one of the things that we have seen in the statistics is that it has had a decreasing level of importance in terms of actual direct employment. Now, there's a lot of indirect employment, no doubt, associated with agriculture, but Hagerstown is increasingly becoming a bedroom community that we saw. And uh, having a lot of people who work there and live there who were maybe no longer associated directly with agriculture. Mm -hmm. They may have grown up on the farm and therefore are very interested in how the bean harvest is this year, but they don't directly work in agriculture. That was one item. Uh, another item was home ownership. What we found, and it was somewhat of a surprise to us, was that home ownership in, uh, in our community is uh, off the top of my head, I think about 74%, which is actually significantly higher than state and county mm -hmm. averages. Mm -hmm. And we asked a lot of questions about that because housing was a very big issue in the, uh, in the, in the whole project. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the third thing that jumped out to me that, that I was intrigued with, and, and certainly I have a bias here as a, as a new small business person, is the, the uh, growing number of small businesses in Hagerstown and, and the perception in the community of how important small business is to our economic future. And, and those are three things that, that I thought were, were very interesting. Mm -hmm. And did, um, now if we talk about, let's talk about the participation from the citizen standpoint. You said you kicked it off in Jubilee days, mm -hmm. and then what were the next steps, the unique ways of getting citizens involved? Well, in September we did a couple of community meetings, and basically we wanted to work on some group process to get community input into what our priorities were. And so we sat down and we talked about important issues to the future of Hagerstown and, and did uh, what I call a future poll exercise, and that is saying, Imagine that it is five or even ten years from now and Hagerstown is 
still a great place to live and we've made some positive gains in the areas that we think are important and it's a good solid community what factors were most important in getting us there mm -hmm. and we had a lot of discussion in our groups about that identified a lot of factors uh, then I made the group make some hard choices and saying listen you, no community can do everything so let's prioritize and pick the most important ones mm -hmm. and also pick the least important ones so we gave the group some tough choices we had all told probably about uh, 60 or so people participating in that, that part of the process. And, and our next stage then in terms of community involvement was to say, let's take that information, their, their conclusions, put it in a survey and mail that survey to, to everybody in the community and say, listen, rate this survey in terms of agreement and disagreement to give us an idea whether, whether this smaller group represents the larger group of the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got uh, about 200 and some surveys back, which we were fairly happy with. Mm -hmm. And uh, by and large, we, we learned that the community was pretty much in the same place as, as the uh, people who participated in the groups. Good. So in total, well, what is the population of Hagerstown at this point? Population of Hagerstown is, uh, I've always said, is loosely exaggerated at, at, at 2,000. Uh, and if you look at the Nettle Creek area, obviously it's a bit larger than that. Well, and I apologize. I keep say, saying Hagerstown, but it's no, really Nettle Creek. Fine. I apologize for that. The, um, so on a percentage basis, were you pleased with the participation level well, we based really on your were. population? Uh, one of our benchmarks was the Hagerstown 2000 process mm -hmm. and the perception was that a lot of people were involved in that process and, and were, were very pleased with it at the time. And probably about 140, 150 people participated in that. So if you look at our surveys plus the individuals that participated from, uh, from the community focus groups in, in other meetings, mm -hmm. uh, we had slightly more than Hagerstown 2000 did. What we did find is that lifestyles today are so different that it's difficult to get people to show up to meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, people are much more able to sit down at the kitchen table uh, at 10 o'clock at night after the kids are in bed and back from soccer practice and finished homework to fill out a survey or to get online and provide us some comments mm -hmm. than, than to be able to show up at a meeting. Yeah. So we were pretty pleased with the, with the participation as a whole. Yeah, well that's great, that's wonderful. Now I know that your um, your final result, your final report is due when to the plan commission again. The the final report will go to the plan commission at their next meeting, which okay. is uh, Wednesday the seventeenth, and uh, will the steering committee will take a look at it before that and make sure it's really ready to go that there isn't anything that that is questionable or doesn't make sense, and then. Uh, take it to the uh, Planning Commission to present it for their uh, consideration. Now, what will happen when you present it to Planning Commission? Is this, this isn't a comprehensive plan, I, I would assume, I mean, or is it? Is this going to be considered their comprehensive plan, or is it more a quality of life process? This plan focuses on a number of things. Okay. It, it will have components in there for infrastructure and economic development. It has components in there for housing, which is a very important issue. And in that sense, it, it will uh, look at issues ranging from uh, planning and zoning issues to uh, the types of housing the community needs, and even uh, looking at issues of, such as annexation. Uh, it also looks at business and retail development in the community and looks at quality of life issues. So, uh, it, so they will adopt it just as, a, as if it was a comprehensive plan? Yeah, it, it does not have some of the components in it that you might say uh, in terms of a specific land use plan or something like that. And that, that is not quite what we were about. Mm -hmm. But our focus, uh, we were funded with edit tax dollars, and our focus has really been on, on economic development and how do we make sure that Hagerstown remains a strong and stable community. Okay. And um, will there be time for public to come in and, and have an opportunity to review the report before it's adopted by plan commission, or do you even know that? Well, we, we know that we've had a lot of the public involved in the report, mm -hmm. so what we'll be doing is, is taking to the plan commission for their consideration. And the Legacy Project actually is something that, uh, that doesn't end on the 17th. It really only begins on the 17th. So in terms of public input and public involvement from there, uh, what we hope is to not only maintain the level of public involvement we've had in developing the Legacy Project, mm -hmm. but also to bring a lot of people into the fold who haven't had time to participate up to this point or maybe weren't sure what all the issues were that we were about. And maybe there's an issue in there that they find very important mm -hmm. and they want to get involved. So our hope is certainly the, the Plan Commission meeting is a public meeting, but we hope that really Beyond that, we have a lot of public involvement for years to come. Great, that's wonderful. Well, then, um, share. Do you mind sharing just a little bit, or give us a sneak peek of what some of those final results have come out to be? Sure. 
I, I think some of the things that we're looking at, and for instance, when you look at uh, economic and de development infrastructure, one of their goals is to say, do we have the infrastructure that will su support both large business and small business? And one of the issues they looked at was intranet service, mm -hmm. and, um, or internet, excuse me, and particularly high speed and broadband. Now that is available in, in many areas of the Hagerstown town itself in the city limits. But there are areas outside of the city limits where you know you need a dial-up connection or something like that. So what they're looking at is how do we bring in high-speed broadband internet service to local businesses who need it, uh, regardless of whether they're in the town city limits or not. And also, a type of broadband service that for some of our businesses that send truly massive files via email, that those files can actually get through uh, a pipeline that is not only fast enough but broad enough to accommodate large files. And one thing we find is that our small businesses here work a lot with businesses outside the area, and that ability to transfer large files is very important. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. So, no, that's, that's okay. Well, one of the other issues that we'll be looking at is, is the area of housing and uh, asking ourselves, uh, what does a community need in terms of housing? And what we found through the Legacy Project is that we discovered a number of studies that have been done regarding housing in our community, but not all those studies have been pulled together to give us some good, solid answers. Mm -hmm. So we've got uh, parts of the housing subcommittee that say we want to continue on, and in the next few months, we want to analyze all of those housing studies and analyze the housing issues, talk to local developers, talk to real estate professionals, and find out truly what are the needs of Hagerstown residents, all residents, for all types of housing, whether it's rental housing, uh, senior citizens' apartments, expensive homes, inexpensive homes. Find out what the need is, find out what the, uh, the resources available are for that, and see how can we fill those gaps. And, and that's another key issue for them. Is there any others that we can have a sneak peek to? So housing sure. and economic development with small housing businesses. Housing and economic development. Small business is looking at how do we promote small business, and mm -hmm. in particular one of the things they're looking at is, is what they call advertising opportunities, and not necessarily traditional newspaper advertising, but how does the person visiting our community, either as a tourist or eating at Wellover Smorgasbord, or as a guest, or maybe even considering that they might live in our community, how do they get information about our community? Mm -hmm. So the business task force, the small business task force and retail task force paired up with the quality of life task force to create a welcome center. And that welcome center will not only have a lot of information about local businesses, but a lot of information about our quality of life so that mm -hmm. uh, we have kind of a heritage center as well as a, uh, a, a business information center located on Main Street. So if you're visiting our community, you can get all the information you need. That's great. Well. Um I, from hearing you talk, it appears that the processes, there's been the overall input section where people have been able to share with you what they want the count, what they want the town and the Nettle Creek area to look like and react to. Then it also seems the next step is that you've already formed task forces that are working towards those ideas right. and setting benchmarks and goals. So how long, what is the current timeline at this point, do you think? Obviously you're turning in your report, then what are the next steps after that? Well, the, um, of course, maybe to, to step back uh, one small step, and that would be to say that, you know, we, we did research, then we had community input, but then we had subcommittees formed to look at all that input and draw some conclusions. So what they have done is they have sat down and not only set uh, goals and objectives, but they've set specific tasks and specific timelines, and they've also said who's going to do that. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, uh, though ultimately it will be all cases, we're going to talk to whoever we suggest is going to get a job done and say, can you do this for us? Mm -hmm. So we've already been out in the community asking different service clubs and organizations, do you want to take responsibility for a particular activity? Mm -hmm. But each of these activities has a, a date and deadlines on it, not only for the subtasks that it takes to accomplish something, but the ultimate goals. So you'll see over the next uh, months and even over the next years a number of activities happening as groups spin off and do their own thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you may well see, for instance, an art guild form in Hagerstown. And that art guild may form as an outgrowth of the Nettle Creek Legacy Project, but it would be our dream that in two to three years they wouldn't be a legacy project, they would be their own freestanding guild bringing arts to the community. Mm -hmm. And you would see the same for infrastructure or small business. that. Uh, you, you would see a lot of groups breaking off and getting a lot of community involvement. We've outlined that in the plan with some specific timelines and things like that. And one of the things that the Planning Commission will get is a calendar 
of, uh, of the different dates, mostly by month or quarter, mm -hmm. that things uh, that we target things will get accomplished. Then what I do is I take off my consultant hat <laughs> and I put back on my Hagerstown resident hat and I and a number of other individuals will be there to say, let's make sure this project happens. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a big part of our lives and, and let's make sure that uh, we get things done. So will the steering committee continue to be a steering committee to oversee all that or is it going to be a one point? Well, percent? you know, we haven't asked the steering committee whether they want to do that yet, but okay. that, that's one of the things that we'll be asking <laughs> is, is uh, you know, what role do you want to play as a steering committee? Mm -hmm. I know my personal commitment is to say the legacy project is not going to die uh, and it doesn't end with a report. And I know a lot of the people involved have said we want to keep our subcommittees alive. So the question then is, uh, in terms of governance or form, what form or governance would, would the legacy project take in the future? Does it remain an informal citizens committee that, that where we pull in, uh, pull in experts in particular areas to tackle issues as they come up, or do we become a little bit more formal and, and either go 501c3 with a steering committee or uh, some other mm -hmm. activity? Haven't quite decided on that yet. A sure. lot of it depends on what's to, what's what the demand is for the legacy project in the coming years. Sure. Well, as we begin to, to close out the show, there's a couple other things I, I want to ask. And one is, some people watching this show will remember the Wayne County vision process that, that we went through. And I want to make sure that they hear from you how this is different. And I'm, I think I'm confident that you know how it <laughs> is different. So could you share from your perspective how you have um, listened and heard about the county process and how the legacy project right. is different. And, and first off, um, you know, as you know, we, we got lots of information from the Wayne County Vision process, which, which interestingly, when you take a look at some of those key issues that, that people cited in Hagerstown to the, the Wayne County Vision, that those are si very similar mm -hmm. issues as, as have come up in the, the uh, Nettle Creek Legacy Project. One of the key things about our pro project is, number one, it's, it's very strongly localized, but it's not to create an isolation in, in Hagerstown and Nettle Creek area. There will be a lot of collaboration uh, between Nettle Creek and the county as a whole, both Wayne County and Henry County, since we spill over both directions, mm -hmm. to get things done. But it is, it is saying, let, let's do an intensive focus on, on Wayne, or excuse me, on the Nettle Creek area. Right. Probably some of the, the, uh, the strong attributes of this process that, um, that I think may have existed in the Wayne County Vision process, and I was not around for that process, so I certainly mm -hmm. couldn't speak for it. But I think some of the attributes to, to the, the form of planning that, that I really believe in is doing a lot of statistical research, mm -hmm. getting a lot of community members, as many as possible, involved in a process to get as much consensus as you can, but then having a to-do list that has specific people and specific timelines so that things get done. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that would be any different than Wayne County Vision, but I think that uh, probably what, what is, is as different as anything is the fact that it's, it's, it's an intensive study that focuses very closely on Hagerstown and the Nettle Creek area. Well, and as you and I talked about early on in this process, it's very important that the small communities and the small towns have some ownership and have a plan for themselves and have pride when in working through that. Um, and I, so I applaud the Nettle Creek area, and I know a lot of people do applaud that area for moving forward with this because it's important that you have it. I know Richmond is about to kick theirs off again. Um, Fountain City did theirs several years ago, and so it's it's an ongoing process that. And Cambridge City just completed theirs two years ago, so it's important that it continue, and and I think it's exciting. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, I want to ask you just on a personal note, and this is not on the list of questions that I gave mm -hmm. you earlier, so I'm putting you on the spot. That, that's fine. But knowing that you have been involved in this type of process from a corporate standpoint, what personally have you um, learned from the community aspect of doing this, or how personally have you been changed a little bit? Well, you know, it's it's been very interesting. I've been probably one of those typical Hagerstown people over the years that's lived in Hagerstown as a bedroom community and worked outside of the community. Uh, most of my jobs had me on the road by 6.30 in the morning, and, and if I was lucky, home by 6.30 at night. So I never really got involved in Hagerstown things. And uh, it's been a real pleasure to be able to do that because now I have a business located in Hagerstown and have the ability to do that. But what I found is that it is very satisfying to say, how can we make our community a better place? And we know that not everybody can do that. Uh, not everybody has the time and the ability to participate uh, just because of life's uh, different hassles. 
But that's probably been the, the thing I've enjoyed the most is being able to reconnect with the community that, that I've loved a great deal and uh, to, to help the community in some small way to grow. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Now, one last, one last question. If people need to know more about the process, um, what, where can they get information about that? Best thing to do is go to the Town of Hagerstown's website, okay. which is uh, www.hagerstown.in.gov. And uh, if you get to that website, it has links to all kinds of uh, legacy project information. And we'll be updating that regularly. We'll be posting the community report on there. So it'll be just a clearinghouse of legacy project information. Good. Well, I know that there's been a lot of people involved. But I also know from experience, being the point person, there's some pressure involved in it. And I would just want to say congratulations. Well, thank you. We're just delighted to have done it and had the opportunity to do it. Well, that's good. Thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you. And thank you for being with us as well. If you have any other questions, I'm sure that Jeff Hudson's phone number is in the phone book. Absolutely. <laughs> you can contact him there or get on. You can also access the Town of Hagerstown off of the Waynet website as well. And I want to thank you for being with us today and join us the next time for your Wayne County Connection. public school into a whole new kind of school. One with a curriculum that really motivates kids. One that has extended hours, six days a week, year round. With loads of academic, cultural, and recreational activities. One that has support services, like medical and dental, right there. A school where parents' involvement is encouraged where teachers have more time to teach. And students are excited about learning. There's just one problem. My child doesn't ever want to come home. You can help turn your school into a community school for excellence. Find out how. Call 1-877-LOVE-TO-LEARN. These people are in the business of changing lives. They're not miracle workers, though some would say they are. They're not physicians, but they know where to look for cures. Like helping this woman with breast cancer find a treatment that saved her life. Now I can tell my doctor what I want to do. Or showing these businessmen where to find local promotional opportunities. Connecting this man with his roots. Mr. Schwartz. I didn't know there were any still alive. I must plan a reunion. Every day, Indiana libraries change lives. And the people who work there. Let me help you. Work for you. Global reach. Local touch. Connect with your Indiana library. You're watching Whitewater Government Television, Cable 11, a service of Whitewater Community Television.